Welcome back to the Crochet Credits with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is an afghan that I designed for myself because I did not want any pressure and sometimes I just want to crochet for me. So this is called the Study of Transition and Texture Blanket and this is a, such an easy one to follow and I'll tell you a little bit why I designed it and how you can do one for yourself too. So the afghan that you see is 60 inches by 60 inches so it's basically square and what this is is that it's consisting of five panels and I thought to myself when I first started this I just wanted a project that I could just sit and relax to that I didn't have to worry about teaching and I didn't have to worry about getting it done on a certain time. I just wanted this for me and so what I was gonna do originally is that I was just gonna use the one uh, particular textured concept through the whole thing and I thought oh god that's kind of boring. So I wanted to tease myself and use a skill that I learned back from from when I was a kid of the zigzag wave kind of idea here. So what I wanted to do is that I didn't have enough of the Barcelona color that you see here and I had some Shanghai so I decided to mix some Shanghai into it in order to get it to go. So what this is is total of 15 balls you will see three panels of Barcelona. So one, two, three and those consist of three Barcelonas each and then the Shanghai are consisting of three each. So the whole idea for this is that if I'm gonna use yarn I don't wanna waste yarn and so what I wanted to do is I did the panels big enough so that once the three balls were done then I just immediately jumped to the next uh, ball color and did three balls of a different texture and then I brought it back and did three balls. So every one of these panels consists of three balls. Now that you're thinking it was the distance kind of the same. It's pretty close. Um, I wanted to make sure that I used up as much yarn as I possibly could. So there is a little bit of strategy here and this is the study of transition and texture for a reason. Now when you're jumping from ball to ball you're going to notice that you have you're gonna be finishing off with the color. So I go from the inside of the ball to the out and so the outside color here is what I wanna nail the next time I grab the next ball to be able to pop it out and get it very close. So sometimes I have to pop out a little bit extra here from the middle in order to get close to the center uh, close to this color. So what I have to do is that I inject that other color back into the project at a later time. So when you're looking at it here you don't see any obvious changes of the balls being changed between each other other than it's completely different colors within the panel work but everything transitions perfectly. So you wanna make sure that you're uh, concentrating on that. So you're gonna use three balls. So what I would do is that I use Red Heart Colorscape here and you can see the colors here. I didn't use these two colors but these are the kind of things that I would put together. So I would do a panel of this color this color and then another one and etc. in order to make it work. So it's actually kind of a neat idea and we're gonna be getting um, to going on this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to change the size of this just in case you want to and then I'm just gonna be using Karen One Pound. You'll be using a six millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play which I will show you here on camera but this is Red Heart Colorscape if you'd like to do something as fun as that one. So let's begin. Enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her. Let's create a slip knot. So if you'd like to change the size of this particular blanket it's in multiples of four plus one. So you just can chain one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you're satisfied just add one more chain and then you're good to go. Or you can chain 173 and do exactly what the pattern suggests. So I'm just gonna do uh, a couple multiples of four. So one, two, three, four and then one, two, three, four and I'm gonna do it one more time. One, two, three, four and when I'm happy with the length you can lay it on something that you wanna um, measure it up to. Just add one more and then we'll begin row number one. So row number one is not part of the repeat pattern but what you want to do second chain from the hook you can see it so count it back. So one and two get the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet all the way across the chain. So one single crochet in each of the chains going across. So once you come all the way across your chain you're just gonna turn. So this is part of the repeat pattern. So rows number two and three are the repeat for section number one. So panel number one. So to begin this one here what we're going to do is that we're going to chain three and that counts as a first double crochet. So what I want to do is do an X stitch, a cross stitch. So skipping the next one, going to the second one over and just double crochet. And then now come back to the one you just skipped and just go from the behind. So just shift the project forward like you see and double crochet. You will get used to this if you're not used to doing this. So that's one cross stitch done. So skipping the next one go to the second over and double crochet and then just shift the project forward and get the double or get the stitch that you just skipped for double crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. So this is row number two and so then three is back to using a single crochet and you're going to repeat 
these two rows. So single this cross stitch and the next single crochet over and over and over until all three balls are done. So you wanna end so that you have um, just finished a single crochet row. So we're gonna cover that in just a moment. So because you've done in multiples of four, you're gonna cross stitch all the way across and then there will be one stitch left which you see and that's one double crochet. So that was row number two. So let's uh, do a repeat, uh, row number three and show you just to make sure that you got it in your head. So let's turn and work and do row number three. So just chain up one and then it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches. So this gives a separation of the cross stitching that you will see and it makes really beautiful defined lines. Now because I use transitional yarn you don't have to. You can see that this kind of idea plays really well with solid colors too. It plays with the light when you're looking at it. So if you're doing the afghan as showing across you will notice that there will be 86 cross stitches across. So you wanna keep an eye on that number uh, just to make sure that when you bring your panels back. So remember the turning chain also has a single crochet. So my point being is that you're eventually every time you're going across you said if I was doing this sample over and over it'd be one, two, three, four, five. And so when I do the next cross stitch across so let's do it one more time. So let's repeat rows number two. So you just chain up three and then cross stitch your way across. So you wanna keep an eye on that number. I would write it down on a piece of paper on how many cross stitches there are because once you switch over to the other texture um, you wanna make sure that you have the same number of cross stitches because if you don't then that means your afghan it will not be, um, is not growing properly. You might be missing stitches or adding extra. So you just wanna continue just to con uh, going back and forth with just the two rows of cross stitching and single crochet. And when you get close to the final third ball make sure that the last row that you did was a single crochet row which I'm about to do in just a moment. Okay and don't forget the last one is just a double crochet into the end and then row number three again. See that texture looks amazing. Chain one and one single crochet in each. So you can see that once you get in the rhythm of this you can really pound this away when you're in front of the TV. So let's pretend that we have our, all of our three balls done. Let's move on to the second texture. So there's only two textures. There's the crisscross here and then there's the zigzag one that we'll be uh, about to do which is a repeating of four rows and we'll be doing that in just a moment. So let's uh, just get ourselves finished this one. Don't forget that turning chain also needs a single crochet in order to finish. So I'm gonna get rid of this yarn now and let's just change our color just to verify that we're doing something different. So let's begin another color. So what I want to do is that once you get to the end of the row and you've finished off your three balls just turn your work and let's begin row number one of the second section. So we're just gonna use this and we're gonna just slip stitch to attach to the very first um, single crochet that's there and we want to begin to um, work our magic. So now we're gonna chain two and that will count as a half double crochet in this particular case. And so it says one double crochet front post in the next two. So each one of these ones here that we're going about to do um, will totally uh, work out before your very own eyes. So you wanna play with the in the post and the posts are in the very first time are gonna be really kinda tight. So just wrap the hook and then coming around the post. So do a front post. So in the post and then out the, on the front side. It's gonna be tight there for two. So you're doing that one plus you're gonna do the next one to wrap and then coming into the next. Okay so the next one is gonna be the next two posts but from the back side. So we're gonna do back post double crochets. So coming from the back and out. There's other videos on how to do front and back posts if this is not clear but because it's single crochet here it's pretty tight. It's tighter than normal but we only have to get beyond this, this one here in order to get this established. So it's working in sets of two. So that means that if you just did two back posts the next ones have to be two front posts. And why it's a zigzag is that we're not gonna align these up perfectly the next time. There's gonna be a, a wave going on. So I learned this when I was a kid in a book and uh, it turned out pretty awesome. And actually I designed this to be quite transparent. I designed this and then I went back to the book after I was uh, 
had done it and then I realized I had done it wrong. So uh, my point being is that if you do things wrong all the time then it ends up being right. And so you wanna continue to go all the way across. Okay, so there should be an even number of stitches that when you get all the way across. So you want to like even numbers of these sets of two and then the last one is a half double crochet. Just like that. So now what you wanna do is you wanna turn your work and let's look at the pattern and it says to chain two and it says one double crochet in the next stitch. Uh, this is a front post. So we're gonna make this back post now a front post. And eventually after you get looking at this you'll see how it's gonna make sense. So this is gonna be a, a front post and it says the next two are then a back post. So see how this is a front post? We're gonna pull both of the next ones in from the back side. So that's one which is what was already on the back and now this one that's on the front now gets pulled back. And now the next two are in the front. So once you get established it's all in sets of two. So if these two are in the front, the next two have to be in the back. See there's not a lot of thought to it. You just gotta look where you are starting. And it's a actually repeating row, uh, rows of four rows. But once you're done your three balls you can say that you're pretty much done. It really doesn't matter which row that you finish off on this particular um, one. So the next one is one in the back. And don't forget the turning chain. It's going to be in the turning chain for a half double crochet. So let's turn and work and make a decision. So we can see now that the wave is starting to go up on an angle. So what do we have to do here? I'm not looking at the pattern. I'm waiting for you to think. So chain two. Okay, so that's an automatic. And so if the wave is going up, so you see this one's up and this one's up. See, this one's hitting the edge. So that means that the next two, the first two have to be in the back. and it will make sense to you if you're in front of it and it's your project. So then the next two are in the front and this makes sense because you look at it. See there's two in the front, two in the front. So these two must be in the front. So it's all, once you get yourself started you don't have to worry about it much as you're going across. Just keep an eye. You'll notice if something's not right. You might have missed, done one, might have put a front in the back by accident. Okay, and then you're coming into the last and it'll be a half double crochet. Turn your work, let's make a decision. So you see every other row you're turning it and it will change the angle. So we look at this one was in the front and it's by itself. Now we had two in the front. So we know that these two must be in the front. So we must start chain two. The first one must be a back post double crochet. And then the next two are front. Okay and then the next two are in the back. And then the next two are in the front. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense to you. You'll see that all happening. And uh, with the texture of this it looks amazing. It looks like it's basket weave that's kind of just rolling around about on the outside of a basket, wicker basket. So eventually you'll use up your three balls and then you'll come and then you'll switch your transition back then to this. So let's just pretend we're gonna do that and just trim our work. Just weave in your ends, get them nice in there. I used a tapestry needle for mine. And what you can just do is get yourself back onto the blue and start your work. So for row number, or sorry, for the third section it says to repeat section one, repeat row three. Now row three is the single crochet row. So you just want to attach it to the first one and make it a single crochet and then you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. You will notice that because of the basket weave or the zigzag that you're doing that there will be a little more tension in the zigzag because it wants to pull it together. But once you just uh, get it going 
you'll notice that you can stretch it out and it will stretch out beautifully once uh, you're all set and done. So you'll notice that the tension is a little more tighter in the zigzag. That's the only problem with doing a sampler afghans is that tension can change. So make sure you don't forget that turning chain and then start then the crisscross. So chain um, three and then skipping one going one over. So I've already showed you how to do that so I'm just gonna speed on through here. I decided not to apply a border to this. I don't think it needs one. Again you can make a decision that is right for you. You may wanna consider if you are using solid colors though. So my goal is is to hit the zigzags the same number that I had already before. So when I whenever I got a new panel going that I made sure that it was um, the same number of zigzags as the panel underneath it. So before I count, before I finish the final stitch I wanna count my zigzags to make sure it's right. So I told you I had one, two, three, four, five and this one, one, two, three, four, five. So I have the number of, uh, sorry, cross stitches and then I just go into the side one for a double crochet and then turn our work chain one and do one single crochet in each and you keep doing that until another three balls are gone and then you switch back to the zigzag and then do three balls and then switch back and then finish it off with this crisscross and it turns out really quite lovely and it's a project that um, looks amazing as you're doing it especially with transitional yarn and I think that you can have a lot of fun doing this kind of idea. So just make sure you weave in off your ends. I'd use a tapestry needle to weave those in. We have tutorials available on that too and you can see that the tension is a little more here but you know just uh, just pull it out and it's all good. So that's it for now and have a good one. This is the study of transition and texture. Mm -hmm.